it's taking a little bit of yes uh, done okay yeah we are live so thank you for your patience now over to you kundan the virtual stage is all yours please continue yeah thank you very much hey, hi everyone first of all thanks to analytic vidya for giving me the opportunity to interact with all of you and uh, my introduction is already given so let's get started so uh, people are maybe joining from different different time zones so good afternoon good morning good evening to everyone so this session is on uh, deep learning for uh, time series forecasting and uh, 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 we get started with that one yeah so we'll be covering uh, it from a basic just to make sure we all will be on the same page and i want to make sure you understand and uh, take the necessary takeaways from here so we'll be starting with what exactly the time series is and then we'll go into the the deep learning side of it uh, what's the benefit of deep learning how we can utilize the deep learning for time series forecasting so time series forecasting right uh, before going to the time series forecasting uh, first uh, if people has uh, some idea about uh, the machine learning uh, or a data science generally here uh, what we have we have a dependent variable and then uh, we always uh, uh, predict the uh, we have a independent variable and we always predict the dependent variable so take an example uh, now suppose we have a height um, and that is given in any kind of quantity and then we may need to predict for a, the weight of a person and uh, this kind of a simple problems can be solved using other methods like a regression or a linear regression we can say so uh, as the the height increases weight increases or up to certain level up to certain level then it goes down so there's some pattern they follow so this can we can tackle down using uh, the regression like a, a straight line which is passing through all the data points and then a straight line having equation is equal to y is equal to ax plus b something like that and then mathematically we can solve that one so now here uh, we have a two variables or more than two variable but suppose take an example of a two variable one is a dependent variable and one is a independent variable so dependent variable is based on uh, the uh, independent variable how independent variable grows based on that dependent variable grows it so uh, we could easily uh, uh, tackle such kind of a problem same like a uh, uh, take an example this is one example where uh, we have one uh, suppose we have a uh, income it is uh, increasing and the uh, happiness is a kind of function of an income income so as the income grows uh, happiness also grows uh, sorry for that yeah so uh, now here same thing we can predict uh, a dependent variable using independent value even somebody having a zero income is still somebody is uh, happy right so uh, how we can write this one in, in terms of y is equal to x p plus uh, x plus b some intercept and then the coefficient of the dependent variable and then we can tackle down but whenever the question comes of time series there the real problem or challenges starts right because in the time um, and the time series there is only one variable you can consider or in multivariate there are multiple variable but to make it simplify let's consider suppose there is one variable okay which is growing take an example of sales of any company right the sales of any company is growing now day by day so one axis and x axis you can see time right and the y axis the sales are growing but because the an x axis there is a sales or there is a time time is not on which we can bet on and then uh, uh, we can predict something uh, it's not a very correlative but we say sales are correlative to itself so the sales of to today depends upon the sales of yesterday and sales of yesterday may depends upon sales of previous day so that way the historical the any sales or any kind of quantity at any point of time is always depends upon the the previous or the history of that one right so it, this concept we call it as a auto correlation any kind of quantity which is correlating to itself uh, is called auto correlation and that happens in a time series in a time series uh, uh, 
if i'm talking about only one variable as of now right and we jump into the multivariate as well but for now suppose take an example of same uh, with i just given another example of uh, uh, energy consumption of different different countries if you see uh, per year uh, on an average how much of energy have been consumed by different different countries and uh, you can see their graph and we can say okay uh, at what uh, kind of a rate uh, uh, or growth rate the energy consumption uh, increase or decrease in any country okay and this is a time right so such kind of a problems that can easily be solved using the time series methodologies or time series techniques same with the stock price market i just give an example of one uh, stock uh, where uh, based on the time how the stock grows and then uh, it's always depends upon its previous uh, values and some external factors as well all right we'll we'll talk to them later on okay but now this is uh, something about the time series what exactly the time series is so now let's come and conceptualize it so time series is a statistical techniques time series forecasting so now we understand what exactly the time series is but now suppose same problem if we need to forecast like suppose we need to forecast the energy consumption which will happen in 2024 2026 of any country right so how we can uh, forecast it using the historical data we can do it okay same like a stock price if i want to forecast the uh, stock price for next quarter ne or next month right so it is totally based on the historical data we can forecast it okay so here we utilize generally the statistical techniques the old school ways so uh, time series forecasting is a statistical statistical technique that involves using historical data to make prediction about future data point Now, time series is a sequence of data points measured over time, and forecasting involves analyzing patterns and the trends within this data to predict what happens in the future. Right now, applications in many industries. Right, some of them I listed here. Um, but uh, here we actually predict the trends. Right, suppose take an example of a trend in the sales, stock prices, weather patterns, or anything else. Okay. so this is an example where i'm just showing uh, the weather one right okay so weather uh, uh, you can see here the average weather of any month right it's aggregated like temperature how it goes same like this is a uh, the sunshine right how sunshine is uh, um, uh, uh, growing or uh, increasing or decreasing uh, for every month on an average right and this i took it from here so uh, let's move on now whenever we go for time series there are basic steps we should uh, uh, take care in order to do the forecasting first is you should have a problem in hand what exactly the problem you are trying to solve are you trying to solve the problem of uh, uh, inventory management are you trying to solve the problem of demand forecasting are you trying to solve the problem of capacity management or weather forecasting first you should have a problem and then based on the problem you should go ahead and collect the data accordingly what kind of data is needed uh, to uh, solve this kind of a problem then another is you need to analyze that data is the data sufficient or you require some more data to solve this problem and then you have to build and evaluate the uh, and cre uh, create the forecasting model uh, to solve this problem now there are some rules which you uh, which we always apply in uh, in time series first is a granularity rule so in the in the sense like take an example you need to do the forecasting of any kind of a uh, uh, kind of a product like take an example of an uh, views of any program of netflix like suppose we need to i need to forecast in the netflix new program is going to launch in a whole city uh, or in the whole state Uh, how much the views on our average will come in the next month or next quarter or something now suppose if we go and forecast for each and every area in the city uh, there may be fluctuations more noise will come because some areas uh, they may not like program or they don't see at all some areas they see uh, so uh, on if suppose if i go to city level and then uh, do the aggregation then i can see better results for forecasting and that is much accurate as well right same thing we apply here so we call it as optimization level so in a hierarchy you set a level on which you can get better result and you can reduce as much as noise as possible so we call it as a optimization level so that is one granularity rule another is frequency rule another is that like how much of each and every time frequently i need to gather the data right suppose i need to uh, pre predict or forecast the stock market at regular interval how should i get the data like should i get the data every day um uh, from source or should i get the data every week or a month that depends upon the problem we are solving right you need to set that uh, and frequency should not be so high as well horizon rule like uh, 
so in the horizon suppose i want to forecast for 3 years that may be so high number so in such a places where we decide the horizon uh, we should make sure the short horizon should be more precisely predicted more accurate than the long horizon okay uh, so let's move on uh, there are some uh, kind of a terminology we should we should be aware about time series forecasting uh, i'm just offing my video for time being okay uh, so first thing in any kind of a time series uh, uh, the one thing is called level component okay what exactly the level level is the actual average um, baseline which we set for any time series data right this is my level in a regression problem you could you might have heard called intercept right similar like we have a level here level okay so first thing is any time series first thing you need to always predict is level at what level the time series is then uh, then you, then it's easy for you to predict the next level of the time series second is a trend okay what kind of trend it is following in the past right is it a upward trend like stock prices are always going upward or it is going downward or how is the sales or inventory is going okay based on the trend we uh, historical trend we'll go and for uh, forecast the future trend so trend is a second component okay the third in, what is the seasonal component seasonality okay so seasonality is the one of the important component is any time series and uh, i will tell you what exactly is so suppose in the uh, suppose in the uh, december month right okay in the in the holiday time maybe the more and more sales happens of any product right uh, and that the reason maybe the holiday time uh, uh, and maybe like a, uh, uh, same like a like the uh, uh, more and more uh, kind of a uh, views happens of any like program like a netflix amazon prime or something on a weekends right so every weekend you can see the spikes of the views more uh, compared to weekdays so such kind of things we call it as a seasons right okay and as there is some other information also there we call it outlier or the errors or the noise right so if we need to create an equation of a time series right suppose i want to do the forecasting so how many how many components it will be having it will having a level uh, it will be having a uh, time uh, sorry trend and it will have a seasons and then finally it has a leftover part that is called noise okay and then we can forecast for the uh, the time series so i just added them we call it as a additive model or we can multiply them as, as well that is called multiplicative model it's up to them it based on the what kind of problem you are solving okay so this is easy way i just shown the equation but there's some mathematical way as well okay now let's come to uh, first thing is called uh, many many people might have heard this term called uh, univariant and multivariant time series so let, let me clear try what exactly uh, those are so univariant time series so univariant time series the time series where the the type of type series analysis that focus on predicting the future values of the single variable uh, based on its past value so you like take an example of a sales okay or take an example of uh, uh, any kind of an uh, 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 the views of any program so it is only single variable and the so x axis is a time and y axis is just when variable and based on that we need to forecast it right so this is the kind of problem called univariate only one variable is involved so suppose other variables are impacting on affecting that variable then we can call it as a multivariate we come to that okay so um, another is the key assumption of univariate time series forecasting is the future values of the variable interest depends only on the past values and not only other any external factors yeah so that's i just explain okay uh, now how how can we do the univariate time series analysis so, so th there are multiple ways to do this one is a, a way is called is using a statistical model right uh, uh, like exponential smoothing moving averages right a uh, simple average right um, a new method uh, and then auto regressive method arima uh, model auto regressive and integrated moving average such kind of models are very much popular uh, and uh, there are now the new thing is called deep learning right deep learning is growing more and more which we will talk more here in this session that how we can utilize deep learning for time series okay let's come to another thing is called multivariate time series so in the multivariate time series is now because in the time series if you think about a stock price right so a stock price suppose i want to forecast the stock price only based on the historical stock prices uh, then there i may be wrong it may be places because there are some external factors which can affect the stock price to grow right uh, many things like a company brought a new policies company uh, 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 going to launch a new promotions right or company has launched a new product or something external factors so based on that the forecast will 
uh, change, right? So then the more than one variable is involved. So we call here the multivariate times. Okay, if you see, suppose I want to forecast only temperature based on time. This is a univariate, but suppose this temperature depends on many other factors like a cloud cover, uh, dew point, humidity, wind speed. So all this also matters. So in the multivariate, we have a multiple time series. So as the time growing, multiple other variables also growing. So now if, if you see in this example, I have a five time series and this four time series is impacting the temperature time series. So in this case, we, the regular statistical mod models may not be sufficient. Few are there, but may not be sufficient. In that scenario, generally we go with the deep learning ways. Okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, now, these are the advantage of this uh, multivariate times result. It allows for the incorporation of additional information that can help improve the accuracy of the forecast. Okay. So uh, if we talk about the, the, the statistical method, in the statistical method, generally, uh, Go with an assumption. Uh, uh, sorry, we go with an assumption that uh, the the time series is a stationary time series. A stationary time series in the sense the constant it has a constant mean and the variance and autocorrelation, right? So uh, if you see this uh, this figure has a uh, it's a stationary time series because it's a, sorry it's a mean and the variance is constant over the time. But the another time series because you can see the upward trend here the mean and the variance is changing, right? So, uh, uh, so we can call it as a non-stationary time series. So, a statistical model assume that you first you need to bring the uh, time series from non-statistical uh, stationary to stat stationary, then only the forecasting will happen. And the why the reason is listed here. Why we generally why the statistical model generally do this. So, I'm not going into that one. We can directly jump into the demo uh, part of that. Uh, like uh, I will show you how can we do it using the the old ways, so that will be help you to understand the the new ways uh, of a uh, time series. So here I'm using the uh, uh, um, airline passenger data set. Uh, so just to show like uh, uh, how exactly. So suppose I have a uh, uh, data uh, uh, two columns. One is the time, another is the passengers. Uh, for every uh, month uh, for that, how is the how is the average passenger, so that we can forecast for the the the, the next set of passengers. So here the, we go with assumption generally like we set the uh, index as a time. So now you just send the index as a time. So now it's only one variable we need to forecast and then it is auto correlated to itself and then another is a time. Okay, now let me plot this one. So we can plot and see like uh, how the the uh, the time series is growing for the passengers, right? Uh, airline passenger and you can see it has everything. It has a level, trained and then the season seasonality as well. Okay, so now, uh, so <clears throat> if you see like uh, how we can uh, test that uh, the series is stationary or not um, in case of a states model. So generally we go, uh, go with multiple uh, different method. One is this one, uh, Dickey Fuller uh, test. So uh, if you are aware about hypothesis testing, this is about hypothesis testing. Suppose uh, my if hypothesis value is uh, below 0 0.05, then only I say it is a stationary. Otherwise, it's a non-stationary and the hypothesis value is 0.99 then it is we are 100 percent sure like it is a non-stationary time series so we need to make it stationary okay so <clears throat> now let's let's come to this one uh, let's make me plot uh, uh, how exactly the trend is going and how is the average number of uh, passengers in each uh, kind of an uh, a, uh, um, um, uh, bucket uh, how is there uh, a box plot about their uh, mean max uh, and the average of the passengers are okay now uh, how is the season i want to see the season right so i just aggregate into season for uh, for a whole year now you can see like in the august uh, and july as the more number of passengers compared to the other other time there may be multiple reasons for that one okay now as we talked about uh, uh, the the multiplicative model uh, sorry additive model and then we see here i'm going to show you all this component so here this is a main time series and uh, this is a, uh, this is a kind of an uh, trend how the trend is going right and this is a season the seasonality and this is the leftover part we call it residuals or the noise on this data okay okay now let's let's understand how is the auto correlation suppose i want to see the how is the things how the uh, the, uh, the series is co correlated to itself there are these are the kind of plots which you can use to see the how the series is auto correlated itself so auto correlation um, function we use here and you see the uh, after this lag after the lag of 40 uh, the, it is going in a negative direction means 
uh, if we consider uh, up to up to the 40 lakhs uh, uh, it is auto correlating to itself and beyond that it is not so suppose if i want to uh, create a time series model i will consider the lag as below below 40 maybe 35 or something i can consider for a better results so this is about the analysis how we can do the analysis now let's go like how we can do the the time series forecasting so time series forecasting can be sorry uh, Wait a minute. Oh, oh, by mistake, I closed it. So. Okay, let me come to another editor. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, Uh, Okay, okay. So yeah, let's come to that. Okay, now here we can see how we can do time series forecasting. There are multiple ways to do it. Uh, like uh, generally, I told like uh, once we have a data, first we need to go with the missing values, imputations, and all. Okay. Now, uh, um, first is a one kind of a method we use in the statistical, like a NAV method, where we just directly uh, 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 forecast based on the immediate values, uh, whatever the last value, and then. Uh, uh, there's simple, otherwise like a simple average method. We just average the whole time series and then forecast it, right? And then a simple moving average. This is a method where we go with a rolling average, right? Suppose uh, uh, maybe the window we will choose, like a 12 windows. Suppose I should choose the 12 month of window. After I will take an average of 12 months and then forecast for the next month. So this keep on going. And you can see this is also one kind of a way of statistical way to forecast. And it gives us a good trend, uh, simple moving average. There are some other advanced uh, statistical methods. Uh, generally, we can use like a uh, exponential smoothing. First is like a simple exponential smoothing. So where we go and uh, uh, based on some like a uh, weight wait, weighting we will give to the immediate values and then the uh, uh, past values. Based on that, we'll assign the weights and then forecast it. And you can clearly see like uh, here we can uh, predict the or forecast the trends of the time series. Uh, there are some other statistical ways like a halts method. Uh, uh, because here as you can see still we are predicting the level but uh, we are we are missing the train so the train can be forecasted from here uh, but now if you see we 
uh, forecasted the level and the trend, but uh, uh, the seasons are missing. Okay, so there is something called Holtz winters uh, 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 with seasonality, and this is a mathematical way how we how it could, how it can be done. Now, if you see here, we have a, all three things. Like if you go with the previous one in the formula, uh, if, when the forecasting will do have a level plus trend. L is a level, P is a trend. And then we can forecast. But here we can see only forecast, forecast level and the trend. But now we need to forecast the seasonality as well. So in this one, the new term will come called season level, trend, and the seasonality. Okay. And then this is about the detail mathematically. But now we can see like a uh, we can very well capture. So this is a statistical method. Another is a uh, uh, you. It's very popular called ARIMA or autoregressive. Now, this is a method uh, which we use. Uh, first, we'll make the time series stationary. From non-stationary, we make the time stationary. And then on that stationary, uh, using the, like, a, what are the hyperparameter we need to choose? That can be done using the, the methods like a autocorrelative functions or partial autocorrelative function. You can go into detail what exactly those functions are. But this function helps to uh, identify the the hyperparameters of ARIMA, like uh, how much is the uh, the P value we need to choose, how much is the D value, and how much is the Q value we need to choose. And then based on that, we apply the ARIMA, like uh, suppose here is the autoregression model. We can see like uh, we are capturing the, the light, right train, and then the, the moving average autoregression uh, assumes that uh, you know, based on the past observation, you forecast the future observation. And the moving average assumes that based on the past errors, you forecast the future errors and to combine both of them that is called uh, uh, ARMA or, or ARIMA um, integrated as well comes into picture and then based on that we can forecast it. But here is still, is, uh, itself you can see the seasonality is missing. Uh, you can see this ARIMA forecast, train test and then the forecast you can see seasonality is missing. So uh, uh, now if uh, to uh, bring the seasonality there is ARIMA flavor called S ARIMA. Uh, uh, or Sarima, we can't call it Sarima. So here, uh, this is for seasonality, seasonality of Arima, like how we can predict the seasonality using Arima, then here the seasonal component comes and then you can forecast it. Now, this is a long way, uh, which uh, generally uh, can be can be can be done. There is the other way, uh, which is called uh, uh, kind of an um, the automated way, uh, which can be used uh, to do that. We call it as a auto Arima. So if you see here, here, uh, that whole time series I'm doing and then uh, uh, suppose I want to okay now uh... here the same thing I'm let me do up to here okay Okay. Okay. So this is called uh, the auto arima, uh, where you just supply your some hyperparameter initially, and then uh, you supply the data set, and you can see like it is going through ev all the kind of a different permutation and combination, and finding the right model for you. You can call it as a the uh, auto ML as well, right? Uh, uh, but this is one of the automated way to finding the right ARIMA model for you. So you just provide your data set and find that you can see like this is the best model is given to you and these are the hyperparameter can be used uh, for that one. Uh, and then based on that, the forecasting can happen. Uh, now the uh, the principle like we divide the uh, data set into train and test, right? And uh, So in the time series, generally we divide train and test not like a randomly. The first uh, uh, some parts we take as a train, like first 70 part or 65 percent train, and the next part we take as a test, so that we need to maintain the sequence. Okay. Now this is the one you can see the training and testing. Uh, these are two parts, and this is the forecasting for the for the next uh, uh, mm, yeah for the next some time. I just like maybe yeah next 12 months. Okay. So next three years, sorry, next next three years I'm forecasting. So this is the kind of an way uh, the regular statistical model works. Now let's come to the deep learning. What kind of benefits the deep learning gives? Uh, so let's come to that and talk about that one. Okay. 
Okay, so deep learning. What exactly deep learning is? Deep learning is nothing but utilizing the artificial neural network uh, for uh, uh, for doing your prediction. So these are very popular one in a, in a many spaces like a image image kind of a classification, right? Or nowadays you can talk about NLP. NLP is much more useful if you heard this Chat GPT, BERT, and all. Uh, so GPT three, GPT four, all these things uh, are. Uh, Everything is about the 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 deep learning, like neural network, and this field is popular since last uh, um, less than ten years or something. Yeah, and before that we do statistical method or machine learning. So this is what exactly the how the artificial neural network works. In the artificial neural network, it is like our brain. So in brain, we have a neurons. Same like in the artificial neural network, you have a neurons, and these neurons are interconnected with each other. And this each neuron will do just a small piece of work. And the collectively that is small piece of work we combine with everything, then it can solve the very very complex problems. Okay. So we can consider this uh, artificial neural network in this way. So you have an input and whatever you need to forecast or predict like an output, and then your layer layers. Multiple layers are connected, so I have just put one layer for simplicity. But there are many layers can go, uh, and each layer have many neurons. Okay, now each neuron, what exactly the neuron is? So neuron is nothing but it has some function. We call it as activation function. So that function, uh, that uh, neuron will take the input from all the uh, previous layer, um, the uh, output, uh, and then on top of that apply some kind of a logic. Uh, activation function is that some logic we need to uh, put, and that logic uh, before applying that logic we assign some weights um, to that one. So in the neural network, what we learn is the weights. What is the right weight to be applied? Because activation function is constant, a number of layers are constant, number of neurons are constant, input is constant, output is constant. Only thing to learn is the weights. What exactly the right weight to be applied to uh, to solve this kind of problem? So the training, when we call it as artificial neural network training, what exactly do nothing but uh, learning the right weights for it. Okay. Okay. So as I told, neural network is not uh, only just three layer. It is very very complex. It has multiple layer. Multiple uh, uh, layers are connected, interlinked, connected with each other. Like in our brain, we have a multiple neurons, not multiple millions and billions of neurons, and then all are connected to each other. So how we learn new things, right? Same like neural network learns. So same like the brain, how it works, the neural network works. And this, as information goes, this information keeps on passing one layer to another layer, and then finally we get an output. So this is a kind of beauty of uh, uh, the deep learning neural network. Okay, so what in which category is neural network uh, or art, uh, deep learning comes? So artificial intelligence is the final one which we all are living here. We still uh, not uh, reach up to its maximum level. So, uh, but artificial intelligence is whole like a superset. Uh, everything is should be intelligent. Everything should be automated. We have not reached up to that level. But yeah, second is the machine learning, which we are working currently, and which machine learning is like a yeah learning from uh, the past experiences and the mistakes how we can uh, forecast the future. Okay, and the sub field of that machine learning is called uh, deep learning, which is utilizing the artificial neural network. Okay. What are the benefits of using now the deep learning or neural network for time series? Okay, these are the some benefits I just highlighted. Okay, the first thing is that now in the statistical method, even we have a kind of a capability to forecast. But whenever the data grows, data is very much complex, right? And to handle such kind of huge data and kind of a complex data, the statistical model. Does not provide that kind of uh, accuracy. Okay, and the uh, second is the when we have a uh, multiple variables, right? Whenever one one variable is impacting another variable, okay, in that cases uh, uh, the statistical model does not provide good accuracy, okay, or good results. And only very few options are available in the statistical methods. But in the kind of deep learning, we have a bunch of options available uh, to to work with the multivariate uh, problems. And uh, the accuracy it helps to increase the uh, increase the accuracy uh, uh, ability to handle the complex problem flexibility in the sense uh, the, the it is very much flexible as the input changes it, it try to change the output and then it can learn from its previous mistakes uh, continuous learning and then uh, now another important thing for time series is the temporal dependencies so in the case of a uh, statistical method. Or like uh, when we are the the data set grows or sequence grows a lot. Like uh, 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 when you were suppose I want to utilize the last 10 years of data, last 20 years of data. When that so such kind of a long sequence dependencies, temporal dependency could not be captured by statistical model. Statistical model can capture up to some limit, and then they uh, could not beyond that one. But in the case of a neural network, they have a ability to capture the long 
sequence dependencies uh, or temporal dependencies. Uh, so these are some of the examples written uh, for uh, neural networks. Um, uh, and then uh, uh, the, there's a problem called vanishing gradient gradient that we'll talk later, but this is some of the benefits of uh, deep learning in time series. Okay, this is one of the uh, example I already shown, but this uh, we could give it a special name. We call it as a feed forward network, feed forward neural network, because every output in this layer is depends upon the input uh, from another layer. And then uh, always the, the sequence will go from um, uh, one direction to another direction. Okay, so we call it feed forward one. Okay. Um, the another is uh, so this is good one in terms when we go for image classification or the classification problem. But uh, whenever the question comes of uh, the time time component, it is not that great due to neural network. Then we need a special neural network. We then call it as a recurrent neural network. OK, so what exactly the new recurrent neural network? Recurrent neural network is the one which should have this capability. In it will then it has a uh, all the neural network, the depth, I mean, feed forward layers are connected to each other, but it should have a time component as well. Time component as well, so we can capture the temporal dependency. Dependency. So I should learn, or I should know what exactly uh, I processed, and uh, in respect to time. So whenever my next input comes, I can utilize my previous time step learning. So in the sense, every kind of a step or every kind of a layer is giving an input to the same uh, 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 giving input, uh, uh, sorry, giving an output to the another layer as well as giving an output to the next time step as well. So this is the way uh, the the recurrent neural network can be think of. Okay, some uh, um, other ways which I can uh, I can help you to think of what exactly the uh, recurrent neural network is. In the re recurrent neural network, this is simplest example like a one neuron. In the one neuron, if you see, suppose I have an input x and output y. In the feed forward, x goes to any neuron, then the output generated Y and then it keeps going in the forward direction. But in the case of an RNN, there are two outputs. One output goes in forward direction as well as one output will still will be there and it will be combined with the next input, I mean the next time step. So you can think about X here easily. These are the time step. Uh, so X0 is the first time step and when we get an input, X1 is the next time step. X2, X1, X2 is the next time step, and then up to XT. Now, the output of the any neuron, one, it will go to the next layer as well as it will going into the uh, the, the next uh, next time step as well. So this is the first. Uh, suppose it goes forward one, and the one output will go and combine with the next input as well. So if we unroll this uh, uh, re recurrent neural network uh, neuron, we can see the um, unrolled way this way. So uh the uh, just to recall the any time step input we comes to neuron it has two output one goes to the next layer one it will be self combined it will attach to the next time step so this will help us to learn the uh, temporal dependency or time dependency but uh, uh, i will come to the rnn but within the rnn category the most popular neural network is the lstm lstm means a long short term memory so it is a special kind of rnn why because it has a memory right memory helps to remember the things right and uh, overcome the limitations of rn these are the some uh, vanilla rnn and this kind of problems like vanishing gradient and exploding gradients uh, generally in the neural network uh, if uh, the mathematical if i talk about will using uh, uh, the the differential calculus so in the case of a differential calculus what happens sometimes the the gradient when we uh, sometime gradient get uh, vanished or sometimes the gradient get exploded uh, while calculating that one so to tackle that problem the lstm was designed and uh, um, uh, so it helps to learn the long sequences as well. Uh, so it has some mechanism called forgetting, forget mechanism. It helps us to uh, forget information that is not worth remembering. It helps. So you, whatever is not worth, just forget it. No need to keep it. And saving information, saving the information that is relevant to be remembered for the future. Okay. So let's see the LSTM architecture. LSTM architecture, uh, the deep learning architecture. Uh, so here in the LSTM cell, uh, each cell of each neuron. Uh, this, like in the regular uh, uh, feed forward network, each neuron has just one thing called one activation function. But LSTM is a little complex where each neuron has some complex logic designed inside it. Okay, what exactly the complex logic? I will, I'm just going to uh, give it a very simple explanation. First is a cell state, right? So this cell state, cell state is nothing but actually how the information will flow, right? 
okay and how information will combine with other information so it has a function uh, 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 based on this function called sigmoid function and tanh function we are not going into that detail but uh, 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 generally if you know like a uh, sigmoid goes from 0 to 1 and uh, tanh goes from minus 1 to 1 so that tanh helps to uh, uh, resolve the problem of vanishing gradient okay now uh, uh, let's another is the forget get so this is this section if you talk about this is the forget get so this is the one which help us to what information to forget. So this value range from zero to one and how much information to forget it. It helps us to uh, uh, use in this uh, cell. OK. Uh, output ranges from zero to one. Zero means completely forget information. One is to keep everything. Another is the input and output uh, gates, right? Uh, so this helps us to input gate is what new information will be, will be stored in the cell step. If any new information is coming, okay, how much of information in that information, how much of that information should be stored, okay? And output is the final gate which will decide how much is the information to be uh, 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 to be forwarded to the next cell or the next uh, um, output. So this is a very high level introduction of LSTM, uh, how exactly this, this works. And that will, will come to transformer, uh, but that before that, let's jump into the one of the demo, okay? Uh, so for that, I am I will be using uh, the uh, the spider is one of the UI. This help us to visualize the thing better, okay? So here, uh, uh, let me load all the kind of libraries and, uh, okay? Uh, okay. So I just loaded all the libraries and the data sets. Uh, what exactly uh, which which you need to show and uh, here uh, 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 the same data set I'm using for simplicity. So um, it can help us to uh, visualize this thing better. OK, so now see I can see the this data set. I just plotted the same uh, uh, airline passenger one. Now uh, first thing is we need to normalize the data uh, uh, so that uh, all values with the same range. Uh, it, it helps when there is a multiple variables. Uh, one variable it can be optional. Uh, now, second thing is the uh, neural network is uh, designed like uh, 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 before that we need to split uh, the train and uh, test data set. So here, uh, generally starting some part will keep it as a training and later some part we keep it as a testing one. Now, first for neural network you need to actually uh, uh, design your input. Uh, so because currently if you see my my data set is uh, is actually in this format. Uh, this format and then uh, uh, now this one. OK, I need to design in such a way that uh, the feed forward can understand. So if you think about uh, the feed forward network, right? So it has multiple inputs and one output. OK, in time series, we suppose we have a one output now because I have only one variable. I cannot go with the multiple inputs. So then we will use some tricks tricks to this one. So if you see the trick, what exactly the trick could be? So trick could be like this. OK, so suppose if I say my first five thing is an input to the neural network. The fifth one is the output. OK, so my fifth uh, value is depends upon the five inputs. So these are the five input and the fifth is output. OK, same thing will repeat from here. Now first we'll skip the first input and this is starting from second one. So this is the one, two, three, four, five. This five are my input and the 148 is my output. Fifth one is output and the same repeats keep repeating. I will then skip one and two and th starting with third one, two, three, four, five. This is my input and this is my output that way. OK, so that way if we we'll use into the neural network, then we can make a trick to uh, do the forecasting from neural network using a single variable. And to make it a trick, we need to design our input. So this is a function which will change my input into the sequences. OK, that's what I'm talking about. OK, I just. OK, and then. Uh, I just put it into train and test. Now let's see. OK, train X and uh, train Y. Let's see uh, what exactly the this one. Uh, is designed. So le let's start with uh, okay, train X. Okay, see now what, how is this train X is looking. Now this is train X is my uh, first five inputs. Okay, and then the train Y. This is my output which I need to predict. Okay, this is the one. Let's compare this with the uh, the main data frame. Okay, in the main data frame, uh, if you compare. Uh, OK, uh, one, two, three, four, five. OK, same one, two, uh, sorry, not uh, this one. Uh, let's uh, use a data set. Uh, OK. Yeah, which is a uh, I just we just scaled up. 
this will help us to understand it better okay now if you see first five one two three four five and then output is 0.5 same here output is this and this is the one two three four five and then keep on repeating next time is starting with here from here one two three four five and the fifth one is 0.84 same here i'm starting from here one two three four five and the point eight is my predicting okay so we designed this uh, our input in such a way that first five are my input and the i am for, uh, forecasting the another value so this help us to use the neural network okay and train it now just i'm going to run uh the training uh, part of it so this is my neural network okay so here i'm using the keras and the, the tensor flow uh, uh, which is uh, uh, designed by and uh, 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 by the google given by google tensor flow and the keras is one which help us to utilize the tensor tensor flow better okay and this i just created i use three layers of three layers of the neural network first layer is my input second is the hidden layer third one is my output layer in output layer you can say i have only one neuron uh, means only one output is i'm expecting okay and then this is my now let's start the training process so this is a training like i'm just fitting the model so the training will start from here okay i just utilize the 100 epochs so you can see this uh, and then i use some loss function um, uh, that help us me to calculate uh, the loss uh, uh, so lo loss i'm using a mean squared error here and then uh, final my training is done let's see the, the how exactly the forecast so i'm just forecasting and then uh, this is my forecast and then finally uh, i'm just because i i uh, uh, done the scaling i'm doing a reverse transformation to done the scaling back so i can visualize the data better and then here i'm just uh, directly running everything so we can directly jump into the visualization of the data okay so this is the final one this is my final uh, final what i done uh, i just uh, 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 done the prediction or based on my model and finally i plotted my results so if you see here uh, okay my result the all this red one is the whole uh, original data set that uh, this is a train one this is my training one green one and the test is a train data set on which this it's a very much uh, 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 kind of uh, uh, forecasted the similar to my original data set and then the the forecasting results um, um, also good if you see the train score is 16 uh, rmse and the test score is uh, 37 this is a fairly good score so this is the way we can utilize the uh, kind of feed forward network but now another part is how we can utilize the uh, the specialized neural network like a rnn suppose if you talk like from here and here things are same so i'm just running them uh, as it is before i jump into the uh, this part of uh, Okay, now let's jump to this part. So in the case of an uh, uh, RNN, uh, this is my train. This is my data set. How it looks. In case of RNN, you need to design your sample in, um, uh, input in such a way like samples, time step, and the features. So I'm utilizing here the time step as 10 uh, compared to the old one where I use as uh, five. Here I'm utilizing 10, 10 as one. So okay this is my 10 10 10 i'm utilizing and forecasting the 11th one okay so now uh here is the one in the lstm you have a first you saw like in lstm it is too much complex like uh, this is a complexity but everything you can achieve just like a single kind of a word in the in the library i just written lstm as one neuron and this lstm one neuron has everything i use a 64 64 kind of cell and six e64 has cell this all this complex logic and you just need to specify your network like that lstm and then you specify your uh, input and it, input will reshape in this format uh, uh, based for the it's a requirement of lstm and then finally we have a dense layer and the final output is because uh, in time series i need output as one okay so finally i'm just putting output as one and then this my model let me uh, this uh, train this model okay uh, so i'm just using this model and then uh, okay uh now let's uh here i'm just there are multiple flavors of uh, the lstm which can be used uh for this one uh let, let's utilize one uh, uh the basic one and there are multiple ones also available uh but let's utilize the base one okay for now okay i just i just run the uh this lstm and then for 100 epochs okay so it is running and uh with the same uh, uh loss function and then i can see like uh, it is training my uh, data set uh, and then finally my forecasting is ready i just uh, 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 forecasted the train and test and then finally using the reverse uh, inverse transformation i just converted it back so that uh, because the the forecasting will happen on the scaled one zero to one so i need to bring it back to the regular values and then 
finally this is my score uh, train and test it's a 19 as a train and 35 is the uh, the test score and then finally let me plot everything uh, okay now I can see the plot. OK, here is the LSTM plot, uh, the similar one. I just put a dark blue as a uh, kind of a original data set and the train is the uh, uh, the orange one and then the uh, the green is worth the test accuracy. So it's very much uh, 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 predicting well. So this is a way to use LSTM and uh, RNN. But now let's jump into the advanced one. So uh, now I just give them introduction about some advanced one. Well, how kind of advanced uh, neural network can also be used like a transformer one. OK, so the transformer is the one uh, which is a little complex architecture to understand, but you can uh, I will suggest you to just only understand these three things. Uh, positional encoding attention and self uh, attention. Positional encoding is your time series. Uh, the transformer will assign some kind of an index numbers so it can re it can learn them better and uh, remember them better. Attention is actually based on your inputs that like how much is the output to be uh, to be generated, right? that kind of an relevant uh, output and relevant working uh, that is attention self attention is you are sometime below the uh, between the lines also should be uh, should be should require to be read like take an example nlp right some intent uh, should be understand from the from the sentence of the word same like is self attention whatever be the uh, things you are forecasting based on suppose external factors something is impacting it can easily learn and forecast for you it works in an encoder and decoder ways OK, these are the benefits of transformers. Uh, I'm just not going into it detail for everyone, but yeah, you can. Next is the NBits. This is a one kind of a neural network which is designed especially for time series. And this is also one of the most popular in nowadays NBits. Uh, this also has some logic and uh, architecture which you can go through. I'm not going into that one. I'm just directly jumping how you can utilize this one. And this is the reference material of all the things which I uh, use uh, for preparing my demo and everything so i'm just directly jumping and utilizing the uh, uh okay sorry uh, okay let me go to the so for that i'm utilizing the google collab um okay okay here i'm just utilizing google collab uh, collab for uh, uh, um, just to show you how you can utilize the the transformer so transformer we can utilize using the multiple ways one of them i'm using is the darts so Dart is one of the library where which which is designed especially for time series, and then here uh, it provides all the APIs, uh, and it is based on the PyTorch. And then here we can use the. Uh, um, okay, I think I need to run it. Uh, it will take some time, but yeah. Uh, okay, directly I jump into the uh, the part how we can utilize the transformer uh, because of the time constraint. So the transformer in the from the Dart library first you need to uh, uh, I mean uh, install the Dart library and install all the, the necessary packages uh, from the darts library and the similar one like a scaling and everything what we do generally in the neural network we do and here's the transformer model in the transformer model you supply the some hyperparameter which is related to number of layers uh, input chunk output chunk and all this thing and your model is there and then uh, then after that you can directly go and use the data set to evaluate and train your model and you can just train your model and then evaluate based on that it also provide a good libraries related to back testing so people who are little bit aware about time series we do back testing as well so it usually good it, it given good a kind of an uh, library for back testing and it has uh, some retrain false or true you can retrain the model at every back testing or you don't want to retrain so this is a uh, kind of a transformer how we can utilize and same like nbits nbits is also one of the popular which we can utilize using the the darts library and this you can see such a very complex data set even the such a complex data set can be easily learned by the the darts uh, 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 nbits is one of the specialized model for that one yeah, I think that's it from my side. And uh, yeah, I mean, we are on almost on time. And then thanks uh, to Analysis Vidya. If anything is there, just post a message to me on LinkedIn. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm done. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. So uh, yeah, we have a few questions as well. Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, there are quite a few. So we can take uh, two or three questions. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because we are already running. And mm -hmm. before we take your question, guys, uh, there is a feedback poll live. So kindly give us the feedback as it is important for us to conduct more such session. Uh, sir, are you able to see the Q&A section? Uh, wait, uh, how, how, where you to see? Yeah, you can. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, so. Should I start from first one? I want to ask one question related to. 
feature extraction in the time domain. I got 39 features of AMG data of two. Uh, and last one from extraction. Data. But I want to select only informative top five. Oh yeah, uh, there are multiple ways to do it, uh, to selecting this one. Uh, uh, top five feature. Explainability is the one of the way which can help us uh, uh, to select. Uh, you can utilize deep learning uh, 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 kind of an uh, ways. Uh, multiple like uh, uh, if it's especially if I in short I will just transform them and if you utilize and then um, there you it, it gives us a library to uh, uh, give me the top five impacting features or sub top 10 which is impacting my data set uh, in multivariate this is one of the regular problem uh, which can be done or you can utilize your explainability some frameworks as well like a lime or sharp that gives us the better idea what is the, the, the feature which is impacting more or you can use some PC as well if you think like a uh, uh, what exactly your features are and you want to utilize only certain features uh, then you can use a principal component analysis there are multiple ways to do it on what basis does uh, auto arima decide the best model oh yeah auto uh, arima decide on multiple is it same like a uh, automated ways so it goes to multiple it tries like a uh, multiple p k multiple values of p multiple values of q and then uh, uh, based on uh, uh, your uh, the loss function uh, uh, it it all it decides uh, what exactly you are uh, uh, the right model for this one as well and uh, is there any specific metric for time series model map oh yeah there are uh, map is the one of the preferred metrics rmsc is also we use map is the uh, mpe map these are the one of few of the preferred metrics uh, which we can use uh, yeah i can share some uh, code and presentation uh that should be okay uh no deal with large. Okay, I'm not getting this question. We work with Keras. Should we learn PyTorch also, or should we continue to learn? Oh yeah, I think uh, uh, Keras is. Uh, we can continue with Keras, but there are some like suppose we need to go with uh, Darts. Darts don't use Keras; it uses PyTorch. But yeah, it depends upon library. But if you want to go with a neural network, uh, uh, not a problem. Uh, you can use Keras. Yeah, I think that's it uh, for time. Uh, yes, sir. we have covered almost all the questions. So. Thanks a lot, Kundan sir. On behalf of Analytics Vidya, I would like to thank you for your time and for delivering such a wonderful session. I am sure our yeah, audience thanks. found it insightful and hopefully we can conduct more such sessions with you in the future. Uh, I have shared your LinkedIn profile in the chat section, as you said. So, yeah. Thank and you very much. I thanks, everyone. Thank you, sir. Uh, and I hope everyone has filled in the feedback poll. If not yet, I request you to kindly fill in the feedback poll as it helps us to conduct more such sessions. Uh, if you wish to conduct a webinar or facing any difficulty in registering for any of our, our upcoming webinars, connect with us at data at the rate analytics with .com. The recording of this session will be available on our YouTube channel. The link you can find in the chat section. Uh, also, you guys can check out the upcoming data sessions and register for them as per your interest. Uh, we'll be back with another session of data tomorrow. Um, the link for that is also in the chat section. Till then, bye-bye and keep learning. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. Thanks, everyone.